Okay, we're checking coolant on three different vehicles today, going over some safety, going over how to use these antifreeze or coolant diagnostic strips that check the freeze point. So the freeze points in Fahrenheit or Celsius, and, and all it is is just matching up the colors. We're going to check the ac alkalinity, and we're going to check the pH level, and it will tell us if our coolant passes or not. Okay. So first step is identify the coolant system, whether you have a reservoir with a cap or if we have a radiator, there are radiators right here with a cap, and make sure the system's safe. So before you ever pull a radiator cap off, squeeze the upper radiator hose. You're checking the hose at the same time. Make sure it's not high pressured or have pressure inside and make sure that it's uh, not hot. Once when you realize it's not hot and pressurized, we could take the radiator cap off uh, appropriately and every radiator cap has an example of what not to do which is remove it when the vehicle is hot so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this radiator cap off mine cap is the pressure cap is in on the reservoir visually inspect the inside of the, the pressure cap make sure you don't see cracks or any kind of corrosion or broken pieces check the seal and then I'm going to take my test strip take one of these and we're gonna just dip it in the coolant. We should wait for 30, 40 seconds, but for the purpose of this test, we're just gonna dip it in, wait a couple seconds. The actual instructions on this is to wait 40 seconds. So we're just gonna go ahead and match it up right away. So, and I'm just gonna go down, and it looks like it's the very first one. So the freezing point of my coolant is 32 degrees and my boiling point is 250 degrees, which is about right for San Diego. You could change the freeze and boiling point by changing the ratio of coolant to water. And in San Diego, it should be 50% water, 50% coolant, and it should be right about right here. The next step is to check the alkalinity. And it looks like I am really at the, the, the high side of this. So, I need to go to the next step for us. So if I was in the green, I would stop right here and it passes, but I'm not, so I should go to the next step. And the next step, I go down here and I check my color for the pH or acidity level. And it looks like I'm right here. So my coolant is still passed, but it's getting very close to the fail where I need to change my coolant. So now let's look at the other two cars that we have. We already pulled the dipstick, uh, did the dip on this. So again, make sure you squeeze the upper radiator hose so that it isn't pressurized and hot. Pull the radiator cap only off the reservoir when it, the vehicle's not hot. And check the, the, uh, the radiator cap, make sure it's spring loaded. Check, make sure your, your seal is pliable. There's no corrosion or broken springs or pieces. This is a good cap. You can look at the color of the fluid on this, and this is the fluid is nice and clean, no contaminants. And we did our dipstick already, right here. And this has already been waiting for 40 seconds. So I want to check my boiling point. And it looks like right about here. So this one is actually a stronger concentrate, so there's more antifreeze. In this, so it's negative 13 degrees freeze point, and my boiling point is 262 degrees. So much, there's a lot more coolant to versus water in this mixture, which is good. I go to my alkalinity, and I'm definitely not in the green. I'm to go to the next step. So now I check my acidity, and my acidity looks like I'm still past, but we're approaching the fail. So. You know, it wouldn't hurt to change the coolant, but it's not bad. The cooling system's in good condition. The, the radiator hose is nice and pliable. No cracks, no sponginess for oil. This is a good cooling system. I'd be happy with it. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Now this system is different. This one has a radiator with a radiator cap and a separate reservoir. The mistake people make is they check the reservoir level, but that doesn't tell you the level of the radiator. 
So you should always check the level of the reservoir and there's a, a full, full mark right here where it should be at and it looks like it's right at that full mark which is perfect. It's actually a blue color versus a green color. Okay. And see where we are making that. Okay, so we checked our reservoir here. We also want to check our radiator level. Again, before you take the radiator cap off, there's a caution to make sure it's not hot and pressurized. So the way you do that is grab your upper radiator hose, squeeze it, make sure it's not uh, under pressure, make sure it's not hot. Turn the radiator cap, if it is a little bit of pressure, a quarter turn, release the pressure, and take this radiator cap off before or uh, uh, after you verify the motor safe. You look inside the radiator cap, make sure there's no broken pieces, make sure the seal's good, make sure there's no corrosion. We're good here. Put your dipstick in right here, and then check that on our scale. And it looks like we're a little bit on the freeze point. We're definitely at a 50% uh, a uh, ratio uh, of coolant to water. We're negative 34 degrees here with a boiling point of uh, 265. So this is the strongest ratio of the three vehicles. This car has negative 34 degree freezing, 265 boiling. We'll check the acidity and alkalinity, and wow, perfect. We're right on pass. If you're at pass, you do not go to the pH scale. You stop right there. Out of the three cars, this is the best system. Now, as an example, we have one radiator here. What, what to look for. You want to make sure on your radiator, there's no uh, water leaks along the, the reservoir here on the top. Or the bottom but this was a bad radiator with the exact same radiator cap we just did and this is what you don't want to see you don't want to see the radiator cap come in pieces or corrosion this radiator cap failed on us and when it failed it caused a leak that ate away the radiator and it's like a, a cavity in your in on a tooth it just ate away where the radiator cap seals and this radiator is no longer good so, anyways, that is an example of what to look for while looking inside a radiator.